Ralph discovered that there was a uh, museum exhibit associated with the Silk Road, which had a lot of Tuvan artifacts and things in it, which was at present in Sweden. So Ralph's idea there was that he would go to Sweden, acting as if he could get that exhibit transferred to the United States. And then, when it was transferred to the United States, we would be the representative in the United States to make contact, to look at sites where the things came from, to take pictures that would work in the exhibit, to do various things associated with it. We become museum people that had to go there in order to make the exhibit work. Ralph went to several museums with details of the Silk Road exhibition. Finally, he and Feynman met the curator of the Los Angeles County Museum. During the conversation in which Ralph was explaining all these costs, he finally said, I think maybe we'll do this, but what is your finder's fee? And Ralph said, there is no finder's fee. He says, well, that's kind of incredible. Why are you doing this? He says, because we want to arrange some way that we can get the tuva, and that's our finder's fee. And that was the way that we first got a real chance to go to tuva. By moving the earth, I mean, you know, <laughs> by getting an exhibit to be transferred to America, by, and so on. Well, the Russians laughed, because two-thirds of their protocol were various gimmicks for getting Russians to come here. There were all kinds of people, 17 different people, were coming from Russia for this exhibit. So they understood this trick, see? They would get to see the mysterious Disneyland. Yeah. The first ones to come were high in the system. They were the curator and Professor Kapitsa, Andrei Kapitsa. We uh, took them around and introduced them to some of our hippie-like people who were, have parrots and make music and enjoy life and have a funny view. And he just utterly delighted with all this. And uh, he said, you should come to Tuva and I'm going to guarantee it. I think that he understands what I understand, but what he likes and what I like are the same. You don't want to be treated as anybody special. I'm just a regular guy, he's just a Russian that's visiting, and these guys all shake hands with him. He's not the Academy of Science vice president, deputy in charge. You know, none of that. Nobody said a damn word about that. And he was happy. So I hope that the trip he's arranging for us will turn out that way, if, if it'll turn out at all, which is still a question. Three days later, Feynman went into hospital. He died on Monday the 15th of February. Two days after his death, a letter arrived from Moscow. Dear Professor Feynman, I have the great pleasure to invite you, your wife and four of your colleagues to visit the Soviet Union. I was informed by Professor Kapitsa that you would like to visit Tuva and get acquainted of its sightseeings. We consider the most favourable time for such a trip to be the period of May and June 1988. Your trip will take three to four weeks. Kindly note that the Academy of Sciences will cover your expenses. Your sincerely, Vice President Velikov. Let me show you something here. I'm not usually good at keeping secrets, but this one I kept. I was going to break these out at the monument when we finally reached our goal. Things like this, t-shirt, tuva with a map, stuff. And another one, you know how you have I love New York, I love California. This one says Kizzle love I and and we're gonna have souvenir hats here, now Tuva, center of Asia and everything, but the chief never knew about it. And now I regret I didn't tell him. 
So, anyway, it takes the edge off. The fun. Can I ask you, Ralph? I mean, I'll try anyway. Um, what's going to happen now? I mean, to the Tuva project? It's hard to tell. I, I don't know what my feelings are going to be in a few months from now or whatever. It's been an, a consuming kind of a thing. But on the other hand, certain factors are working their way into this now. Things like, well, tax time is coming up and uh, we've got to think about can we afford a trip like this. And I never thought of things like that before. It, financial considerations never worked into the equation before. But now I'm starting to think of that. And I think that must indicate that I'm not as set on it because I realize it was the adventure with my friend that this was all about. Well, we're getting a little philosophical and serious, okay? Let's go back to what we're doing. One day we look at a map and it's capital is K-Y-Z-Y-L. We've decided it would be fun to go there because it's so obscure and peculiar. It's a game. It's not serious. It doesn't involve some deep philosophical point of view about authorities or anything. It's just the fun of having an adventure to try to go to a land that we'd never heard of, that we knew was an independent country once. It's no longer an independent country. Find out what it's like and discover as we went along and nobody went there for a long time and it's isolated. Made it more interesting. You know, many explorers like to go to places that uh, unusual and uh, it's only for the fun of it and I don't go for this philosophical interpretation of our deeper understanding of what we're doing we haven't any deep understanding of what we're doing if we tried to understand what we're doing we go nutty <laughs> I got it. 